I'm Nicole, and if you are receiving difficulty in meditation, receiving the answers that you seek, and even the tranquility and peace from meditating itself, this video will help you. This music and visual is brought to you by Meditative Mind. So, why meditate? Meditation is the easiest way to connect with our higher self, to get back to a place of homeostasis or balance, harmony with the world, with nature, and absolutely within ourselves. See, we are what physics or quantum physics calls a system. Our system is you the human and the soul. You are the soul within your human. And often when meditation becomes a topic of activity or discussion that this is something you may want to try your human is already stressed out out of balance and feeling the stressors or pressure of the world a burden or burdens are on your shoulders and you feel the weight of a responsibility you just want peace. And you, the soul within your human, is already aligned with the peace that you seek. But there's something funny about our human. Science has proven that we have a brain. We all know that to be true. However, what some of us don't understand is our brain is hardwired to send and receive signals from our human. And when our human is already stressed out and burdened and overwhelmed, our brain is picking up on that energy. And that is the message that our brain receives, burden, overwhelm. And what happens unknowingly when people decide to try to meditate, the stressors come in and they can't get peace and they still think about the overwhelming responsibilities and the very thing that got them feeling so stressed out in the first place. And they give up thinking meditation doesn't work for them. Meditation is a bunch of hoopla and maybe they shouldn't try it again. When it actually what's happening is we have not done a very key technique, very simple, but very key in order to receive that tranquility and peace of mind, body, soul. And that very thing is simply becoming best friends with our human. You see, our brain hardwired to send and receive messages from our senses picks up on the stress in our back, the muscle spasms, the knots in our shoulder, our palms sweating, our muscles hurting, our body in pain, the headache, the migraine, the dry mouth, the cold sweat, the jumping eyes, the stress that's all over our human. And so our human's brain hardwired to send and then to receive that same message that our body is already sending out, we then have this cycle 
of stress that you see as the responsibilities and the overwhelm and you're trying to relax and meditate and you're trying to focus on your breathing and finding a difficult balance. Once we become best friends, we then t teach our human that we appreciate our human. We regain our human's trust. Sometimes it's for our, our first time that we are asking our human to trust us and it's the first time that we've ever introduced ourselves as the soul within our human. And once we do that, we then begin to see that our human trusts us. And our human begins to allow the peace in as we meditate. And how do we do that? Well, we become best friends with our human by simply asking our human what our human's name is. Once we find out what our human's name really is, we realize it may not be the government name or the name that we were born into. We realize that our name is very different from our human's name. How do you know? When you talk to yourself, you might talk to yourself as Let's say your name is Susan. You might say, Susan, come on, Susan, what are you thinking? Oh my gosh, Susan again? How could I be so stupid? Or how could you be so stupid? Oh, come on, Susan. How often do you do that? That narrative is a message that we are sending to our brain and our human is already stressed out but we're sending it repeatedly through that narrative and relaxing is the last thing that our human is going to do our human then feels attacked stressed out even more overwhelmed at fault judged criticized certainly blamed for feeling the very pain that she or he feels at that very moment, totally abandoned and just hung out to dry on her or his own. No support at all. So in order to not throw your own human under the bus, we need to know her or his name. One of the ways that you can find out what your human's name is, is simply to ask. And often we'll hear a name. It may not be your first name. My human's name is Jennifer. My name as the soul within Jennifer is Nicole. Nicole is who I was called for the first five years of my life, Nikki, Nicole, from those that I learned to love and knew to trust, my family, friends. But something happened at five. My mother took me to a place and said, this is where I would be the majority of the day and she'll be back to pick me up. And Mrs. Merkel kept looking at me saying, Jennifer, and I, I remember clutching onto my mother's leg and looking around to see who this Jennifer was. And my mom gently touched my shoulders and said, Nikki, that's you, you're Jennifer. I had never been called Jennifer before. Jennifer was my first name. Nicole is my middle name. Nicole is who I learned was me. And yet, one of my private coaching clients is a maximum security sergeant in a correctional facility. Well, 
call her human's name is not her first name. It is her last name with Sergeant in front of it. Let's say that her last name is Jones. So her human is Sergeant Jones. Now, how did she come about discovering that? Well, I have to tell you, it came at quite a surprise to her and she was exuberant. I mean, filled with so much joy to be able to tell me that. She said, Miss Nicole, I discovered my human's name. When I am driving to work, I can feel myself, she said, tighten up. I change into a different person. I am guarded. And she said she knew that she had to go in that way because of the nature of her job. And so she is Sergeant Jones, the human protecting her, the soul, from everybody and anybody that might harm her. And so let's say that her first name is Kim. And so Kim Jones, her human is Sergeant Jones. And once she leaves work and gets to a certain part in the parking lot, she then becomes Kim once again. When you are friends with your human, that's a big start. But we need to become best friends with our human so that our human feels validated and appreciated and respected enough so that meditation yields the results that we need and desire on a soul level. So as you rediscover who your human is, what your human's name is, and what you, the soul, what your name is, and you reintroduce yourself to your human, you then are working on the best relationship you will have on earth. And when you go to meditate, no longer will you be burdened by the same stressors popping into your mind and not leaving. No longer will you be unable to relax. You will find the homeostasis, the balance, the harmony, the tranquility that you seek. And you will also discover the answers to the questions that are on the soul within your human. You. I pray that this helps you. I pray that this uh, makes sense to you. And I know that this is a new concept to some of you. But it is a concept that I know very well because it is the way that I lived my life. Spiritual guidance is the way Divine Source reaches out to each and every one of us. And we have to know that side of self in order to receive our messages and hear from God. See, the universe is always reaching out to us, but often our human is so bogged down by the stressors in the 3D that often we forget we are the soul within our human, and we don't reside in the 3D. We reside in the fourth dimension. That's the dimension that we call life, because we are not bound by a three-dimensional dimension as the soul within our human. Now, We'll talk more about that in the next video. Take great care, and I'll see you very soon.